the 2019 Candidate Forum. My name is Sarah, and this is Rachel and Robbie, and we are the 2019 2020 Andrew Goodman Foundation Student Ambassadors here on Geneseo's campus. Andrew Goodman was a civil rights activist who was killed in his line of work in 1964. His family created the Andrew Goodman Foundation and Vote Everywhere campaign in order to inspire young people to become more actively and engaged citizens, ensuring just democracy and a sustainable future. The foundation is a national nonpartisan organization that has ambassadors on college campuses all over the United States. Together, we've impacted the lives of more than a million college students thus far, educating them on the values of civic engagement and the importance on exercising their rights to vote. If you'd like to learn more about the foundation and our vision, please see the back of the information sheets you've been given tonight. Hey everybody, uh, just a real quick explanation about uh, the difference between town and village, just for anyone who might not be aware. Um, so Geneseo Village is contained within the larger Geneseo town. Um, the Geneseo town includes more of the farmlands and the wider area around. Um, there are, is a town board and a village board. They each have separate responsibilities and right now, uh, we only have town positions up for election. We don't have any village um, candidates up for election this year. Just so that you understand the difference and that there are no village uh, elections happening this year. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm just going to explain a quick little thing about um, questions for judicial candidates versus town council candidates. Um, you might have noticed on your information sheet that you received tonight. Um, Judicial candidates cannot answer questions that would indicate their partisanship in deciding court cases. Um, they can't really give you their political views. Um, so uh, if you did happen to ask a question like that tonight, or um, uh, if, uh, we, if you submit a late question, excuse me, um, uh, we won't be able to ask that to the candidates. Um, just another little quick plug. Thanks to new legislation passed by New York State, we do have early voting in, Leg in uh, Livingston County this year. Um, the uh, Board of Elections opens on October 26th. Um, that is next Saturday. Um, and you can check the Livingston County government website and go to the Board of Elections section to find out when the Board of Elections is going to be open so that you can go vote early. I know that as a student with a pretty tight schedule, that this is gonna be extremely helpful. Um, now I'm gonna hand it over to our moderator, uh, Chairman of the Communication Department, uh, Dr. Herman. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this uh, important time. Uh, it, this is a, a great opportunity to uh, see local politics at work, certainly. Um, and, and I appreciate uh, all of you coming. Uh, just to um, make sure we all have an understanding of what's going to happen. Um, they, uh, each candidate is going to be allowed four minutes to introduce themselves, give a, a, an overview of um, who they are and whatever else they choose to say at that time. And um, while they're doing that, we're going to be sorting the questions up here and um, trying to find a balance um, to the best of our ability uh, between questions for the judicial candidates and questions for the town council candidates. Um, some of the questions um, some of you have written that were specific for um, maybe the judicial candidates, but I think um, if, if it seems they're appropriate for um, all of them up there, um, I will put it that way so that um, we can take advantage of um, the broader perspective. If a question was presented that was specific to a, a, a particular candidate. Why did you vote for this or something like that? Or why did you make this judgment call in some court case? Um, I will not ask those questions. Um, the, the idea for the questions are that they um, can be answered by, by any of the candidates. The, the candidates, um, I've been told, will remain for a period of time after um, we are done, so uh, if you have that kind of a question, you can approach the, the candidate afterwards and, and ask them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, there are quite a few cards up here, so um, I'm, I'm hopeful uh, we'll, we'll be able to get through them all. I apologize now if we don't. Um, I you know, will try my best. We'll, some of the questions are also um, similar or 
closely related, and so you might not hear your exact question asked because I might be merging it um, with another one and hopefully not doing injustice uh, to either. So um, thank you for your patience if I do um, make any mistakes. I also want to thank the, the college for hosting this and for the Livingston County News um, for uh, videotaping it. And so if you want to go back and watch this or uh, encourage friends and neighbors to do so, they'll be making this available through their website and through their Facebook page. So you can always uh, re-watch it um, uh, uh, in the future if, if you think that will be helpful. So um, they will, uh, oh, they will be, if you're wondering what's happening, we have a really high-tech system, <laughs> even color-coded, so you all will see. So they, they are, during the q and I mean, during the questions, they'll have 90 seconds to respond, and uh, one of our great student workers will be prompting them as their time um, uh, starts to run down. So thank you again for coming, and we will, um, I guess we'll just start at this end. For uh, the four minutes, you can introduce yourself and, uh, and you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Great, thank you. Um, I'm Jen Noto, and I'm running for county court judge. For those of you that don't know me, I was born and raised here in the county. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband, Corey, and I, we grew up in the town of Mount Morris. Actually, Corey grew up in the village. Uh, we live here in the village of Geneseo now, um, and we are raising our son, Jack. He's in eighth grade at the middle school here. My husband works for the sheriff's department, and he's been there just starting his 23rd year. In terms of my uh, career, I've dedicated my career to serving Livingston County. I started out right out of law school, working for the Supreme Court Appellate Division uh, in Rochester, and I worked on um, complicated legal appeals, uh, mostly civil in nature, and I did research and helped the judges draft their decisions in those cases. From there, um, I went on to work here at our county district attorney's office. I was hired to do our, our felony grand jury work and also our special victims prosecution. So I handled felony level sexual abuse, sexual assault cases. I also coordinated the prosecution of our uh, domestic violence cases. And I handled our felony grand jury matters, getting them ready for um, in presentment to the grand jury, getting the indictments drafted. And I did that work here for just about three years. And then I got the opportunity to continue to serve our community, but at a more, at a more regional level at the US Attorney's Office. I joined the U.S. Attorney's Office in November of 2007, and I worked for nine years there in the narcotics and organized crime section. There I worked uh, and directed large-scale, multifaceted investigations, worked with law enforcement of all levels, local, federal, and state. I was responsible for prosecuting um, numerous complex trials, conducted uh, numerous hearings, uh, warrants, and I also had the opportunity, opportunity to handle appeals before the um, for the circuit, Second Circuit Court of Appeals uh, down in New York City. As a, an assistant United States attorney, I would say that the federal bench had very high expectations. We had a lot of written product there in addition to the extensive litigation that we did, and the uh, uh, judges there had made sure that we adhered to the highest of ethical standards. That was their um, expectation and that of the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office as well. In November of 2017, then an opportunity arose for me to come back to the county and continue to serve this community, but again, at a local level, at our county level. And that's where I am today. I am your senior social services attorney for the department. I handle all of the legal matters for the department. A large chunk of what I do is child abuse and neglect cases in family court. As you might imagine, those are some of the most complicated and difficult cases that our family court handles. Um, I also handle all the other legal issues they have. It might be adult guardianship, temporary assistance, estate recovery, Medicaid issues, liens, mortgages, anything that else that comes up for the department. My time here at the uh, department has really opened my eyes, I think, to the amount of family court that our county court judges do uh, and the in impact that our decisions that are made on a daily basis in family court impact the residents here in our county. I really feel strongly that my experience at the social services department as your senior social services attorney has really given me um, a deep understanding of the complex matters that are handled there. And um, my dedication to serving this community throughout my career 
combined with my extensive work um, in criminal experience, both as a federal and a local prosecutor, combined with my in-depth knowledge of the family court and my dedication to serving our community make me um, uniquely qualified to be your next county court judge. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you to the LCN, SUNY Geneseo, to my fellow candidates, congratulations. We are two weeks away from election day. It's been, uh, it's been a long haul for everybody. Uh, I can attest that we've all worked very hard for this. Uh, my name is Kevin Van Allen. I'm running for Livingston County Court Judge. I live in Avon with my wife, Kara, who's here today, uh, my four daughters. Um, I've had a, an office or a presence in Geneseo since 1998. Right out of high school, I started working at a law firm right up here on the corner of Maine and University, Prezzuti Law Office. Started there, worked full-time during the day, put myself through college at night at St. John Fisher College. Uh, while I was there, I handled all types of legal matters, uh, from real estate closings to estate proceedings to preparing matters for civil trials to reviewing criminal, criminal cases, um, working with the attorneys, making sure cases uh, were ready to proceed. I then went to law school, continued my employment at Prezzuti Law Office and continued uh, working just about full time. The first year that I was there, I took a, pulled the lever back a little bit on work, but uh, went to law school at University of Buffalo, continued my work again at Prezzuti Law Office, where I returned uh, as an attorney and worked there until 2011, formed my own practice right here on University Drive. It was Cannon and Van Allen and is now Van Allen and Hoffman. During my entire career, uh, I have worked in all four courts that are covered by a county court. Our county court judges handle family, surrogates, county, and supreme. And without gap or without, uh, with, without any break in that work, I've continued uh, to work in all of those courts, from small matters to homicide trials in county court, from simple contract disputes to multi-million dollar uh, civil litigation jury trials, surrogates court proceedings, um, family court proceedings of every variety, representing parents. Uh, I've been an attorney for the child. Uh, I was appointed our court examiner, uh, recommended by Judge Wiggins and confirmed by Judge Scudder at the time, and that oversaw all guardianship proceedings in Supreme and surrogates court. Um, I regularly provide training to law enforcement uh, I'm a lecturer at the uh, Rural Police Training Academy. I'm also a member of the Attorney Grievance Committee, um, where we handle uh, matters of attorney discipline here in the fourth department, which covers uh, this area, Livingston County and surrounding counties. Um, uh, again, um, as, um, as a lecturer for law enforcement and for the community, um, I'm proud of the fact that uh, my knowledge, they trust my knowledge, they trust my abilities, and they routinely seek me out uh, to, to provide that training. Um, again, I uh, look, forward to, uh, look forward to your questions and uh, appreciate you all for coming. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Justin Hill. I'm an assistant district attorney here in Livingston County. First, I want to thank the college and, and the LCN for putting on this great event. Growing up, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do uh, when I went to college at John Carroll University, uh, I really had no determined life course at that time. When I was 22 years old, I had a family member of mine. I, I lost her to violence, and I didn't like the way that the district attorney's office and the police had handled that matter. So at that point, I, it, I decided that I wanted to become a member of the criminal justice system. I actually started off as an assistant public defender in Monroe County. Uh, it was a great experience. I got to be in court every day and, and learn the ropes. But deep down, my heart was always pulling me to be a prosecutor. For the last 15 years, I've been an assistant district attorney. I started in Erie County and in Monroe County working in the Violent Felony Bureau, prosecuting some of the most dangerous and violent criminals in those regions. For the last seven years, I've had the privilege of working in Livingston County, being the chief sex crimes prosecutor and also the chief domestic violence prosecutor in the county. Every day of my career, I've been in the courtroom. For the last 15 years, I've prosecuted every type of case there is. Murder, rape, robbery, burglary, DWI, and the list goes on and on. Every day I'm in there working with young children, uh, working with domestic violence victims, 
helping them through the process, guiding them through some of the worst experiences of their life. I've prosecuted spouses who have assaulted their loved ones. I've prosecuted parents who have assaulted young infants. And I've prosecuted even family members who've sexually assaulted members of their own family. Every day I've been in there working on these complex and challenging cases, working with families and kids. I'm also active in the community. For years I've volunteered at the Avon Primary School. I'm also on the Avon Little League board where I also coach. I actually also started my own basketball program uh, in Avon for girls when we didn't have one. And I know Kevin and I are, are, are very looking forward to playing Livonia this year. We just told Margaret that. But while I love being a prosecutor, I want to make a greater difference as a judge. It's a scary time right now in our county. Every day I'm working on very serious sex abuse cases, very serious sex assault cases. I'm seeing families ripped apart by drugs, opiates, and, and alcohol. You need a judge who's going to be able to deal with these issues. We also have very uh, significant changes coming to our court system on January 1st. Uh, so we, you need a judge who's going to be equipped to deal with those changes. And I've been going door to door every night since February as, as, as my opponents. But the one thing, the overwhelming message that I get from people when I go to the doors is they want a judge who's going to be fair, who's going to be knowledgeable, and who's going to protect them. Being fair is something that I've always prided myself on, treating everybody in the courtroom with dignity and respect. I've never been a subject of a grievance by a defendant I prosecuted. Or, or anybody in the courtroom that I've gone up against. Knowledgeable comes from that 15 years of experience being in these courts every single day of my career, prosecuting these challenging cases and protecting this community. That's what I've done every day for 15 years as a prosecutor. It's these qualifications and it's this experience is the reason that I feel that I'm best suited to be your next county court judge. Thank you. Is this working? Great. Thank you so much for coming, and thanks for the organizers of this. This is a, just a tremendous opportunity, but thanks so much for those that are here. It's so great that people care about this election. It's important. So I'm Margaret Graf Linsner. Um, I've been a, a licensed attorney in New York State since 1992, which is nearly 28 years. I'm currently a judge. I'm a town judge in the town of Livonia, having uh, presided there since 2016. Experience really matters in this county court race, and the right experience really matters. Our next two county court judges are going to be serving a term of 10 years, and during that time, the county court judges are going to be handling family court matters, criminal matters, surrogate court, which is essentially states, uh, states and other matters, and after two years, Supreme Court matters. I'm the only candidate who has judicial experience or whoever, who has ever been a judge. I've been an attorney for nearly 28 years, and during that time, I've represented clients in all of those areas, criminal matters, family court matters, estates, surrogate court matters, and Supreme Court matters. A large portion of what the county court judge handles, however, is family court, and I have extensive experience in family court. Um, family court en encompasses a number of things, neglect and abuse, but also custody, paternity, child support, um, juvenile delinquency, adoption, PINs petitions, and I've handled all of those for the 27 and a half, nearly 28 years that I've been practicing. What really sets me apart is for over 27 years, I've been a member of the Law Guardian program. Now it's called the Attorney for the Child program. And what that is, is representing children and family in Supreme Court. Um, and advocating for them and explaining to them the importance of what's happening and answering questions for them. And I'm proud of that, that I've been a member of that, an active member of that for over 27 years. My entire practice and professional career started in 1992 um, in Tom Moran's office in Livonia. Um, and it's been based here, right here in Livingston County. I grew up here in Livingston County. I grew up in Livonia, graduated from Livonia. My husband, Sam, graduated from Geneseo, and we've raised our family here in Livingston County in Livonia. We have three great adult now children. In addition to providing legal services 
to thousands of families in Livingston County over my entire career. I have dedicated countless hours to community service and volunteerism here in Livingston County, including pro bono work, which is representing a lot of times elderly people or disadvantaged people who cannot afford legal services and handling that for free because they cannot afford that. And um, I'm proud of that work as well. As a judge right now, I'm fair and I'm impartial. I hold people accountable according to the law. I support our Constitution and I respect my position as a judge. Frankly, I don't believe a judge should be political at all. And instead of spending my time with politics over the decades of my time here as my home in Livingston County, I have uh, committed, uh, committed, I have dedicated hours of community service and time in helping families in Livingston County. I think it's important to elect a judge who is fair, respectful of everyone, but independent of politics. I love what I do as an attorney and a judge, and I've made a positive difference in thousands of families for almost three decades as, as an attorney, a law guardian, and as a judge. And if I'm elected as county court judge, I know I can continue to help families in our county, and I ask you to give me that opportunity. I have the right experience and the judicial experience to faithfully and impartially perform the duties of county court judge on day one, and I'm respectfully asking for your vote. Thank you very much. We will now pass the mics over to the uh, legislative candidates. Is this working? You can hear it? Uh, now for something completely different. <laughs> Foremost, I am a family man with an incredible spouse, four children, and three grandchildren. I am a mathematician, a small business owner, and an inventor. I can gather and analyze evidence, and I know the value of listening. As a high-level federal employee, SUNY professor, and Air Force Research Lab scientist, I've worked in teams, managed multi-million dollar budgets, and navigated by bureaucracies. I have a gentleman's understanding of the law. I've drafted legislation in Congress. In New York State courts, I've filed motions and petitions. I've argued cases and perfected appeals. I understand that the law is not purely algorithmic, and that discretion in its application and its adjudication is often required. A Republican friend of mine, which I have many, with a long career in law enforcement, suggested the incorporation of stories into this presentation. So here's an analogy to the New Testament parable of the wineskins. Hopefully, being Catholic with eight years of Catholic schooling, having three priests at my wedding, one of which was my best man and none of which were the officiants, makes that appropriation okay. The parable is, you can't put good wine in an unmaintained wineskin and expect a good outcome. There are two parts to the parable the wineskin, and the wine. Analogously, there are two parts to the oath of office for Geneseo Town Board, to support the Constitution and to discharge the duties of the office. I am a Democrat for the Geneseo Town Board because I think more balance is needed on a board that is exclusively Republican. I know what it means to be a Democrat, but what does it mean to be a Republican in the age of Trump? So many laws and conventions have been thoughtlessly trashed, and we live in a district where those under felony indictment get quite local Republican support and get reelected to Congress. I lived through the Nixonian constitutional crisis, coming home from St. Peter's School in Haverstow, New York, to see Bob Barker of The Price is Right and Gene Rayburn of Match Game replaced by Watergate committee senators Democrat Sam Irvin and Republican Howard Baker, along with White House counsel John Dean on TV. Those were dark times. Today is darker. Back then, Republican leadership had a deeper commitment to the Constitution. Back then, Nixon's Attorney General, Elliot Richardson, resigned rather than become the President's henchman. If only Attorney General Barr felt the same way. And about the Constitution, remember the oath is to first support the Constitution and then discharge the duties of office. So as the parable alludes, unless a board member supports the Constitution and maintains the wineskin, it ultimately doesn't matter what else that board do member does in regard to their duties. In a bad wine skin, the long-term outlook is bad, even for good wine. So the moral of my parable appropriation is this. It is impossible to simultaneously support Trump and the Constitution. Support for Trump is the bad, that is to say the civically irresponsible wine skin. 
Being Republican has also been both cultural and political, and I don't think that all Republicans support Donald Trump. However, polls indicate that 87% do. And I'm not saying that 80% of the town board, which consists of the supervisor and the town council, supports Trump. I know at least one member did and still does. I've inquired further, but I haven't received a reply. I'm not sure about the others. I have a sense that some don't. However, my senses in this exact regard have deceived me in the past, and my shock there led me to national TV. So to return to my Republican friend, he often talks of his Republican parents who have passed, and although he greatly misses them, he takes some solace in that they haven't seen the Republican Party take on the dangerous cult-like qualities that it has. In closing, if I am elected to the town board, you can be assured that support for Donald Trump will go down. I pledge to place the Constitution over party loyalty and to place evidence, reason, and the law over party ideology. Thank you for listening. Hi, my name is Amber Haney and I'm running for Geneseo Town Council. I uh, wanted to take a moment to thank everybody for coming and the Livingston County News, SUNY Geneseo Task Force on Voter Engagement, the Center for Com Community at SUNY Geneseo, Dr. Andrew Herman, and Nick Palumbo for arranging all of this. I'm, very actu I'm ve actually very humbled and honored to be invited. Um, I also want to thank the people that came out, obviously. Um, without you guys, this wouldn't exist. So. Um, Again, my name is Amber Haney and I'm running for Geneseo Town Council. A little background about me, I graduated from SUNY Brockport in 2003 with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and political science. After graduation, I spent some time as a paralegal um, before being hired as a caseworker with the Livingston County Department of Social Services, um, where I've been employed for the last 14 years. I'm actually a lifelong Livingston County resident. Um, I'm in good company with Jen Noto. We grew up in Mount Morris. Um, uh, my current position is the probation-based preventive caseworker. So I work with kids at, at risk of foster care because of juvenile delinquency proceedings or persons in need of supervision, if you're familiar with that. I should also, I should also mention that I'm currently um, a public administration student in the master's program at SUNY Brockport. I anticipate that I'll be graduating in spring of 2020 if all goes well. Um, as I've been meeting with members of the Geneseo community, many have asked why I decided to get into this particular race. And I wanted to share some of those thoughts. Um, I spent the last 38 years of my life being relatively comfortable with the way things were, were with the world. But in 2016, that all changed for me. And I realized that it, it wasn't um, enough to just sit on the sidelines and watch what was happening around me. I had to get more involved. So I started working in uh, local campaigns and some grassroots activism. What I've come to learn through these experiences is that um, local government is the most important level of government. Um, as chaotic as our national and state politics are, or can be, we still manage things on a local, local level. Um, we deliver the necessary services required to live collectively and in harmony with each other. I've reviewed the minutes um, from the town council meetings, and I have to say the current board members do a great job of collaborating and meeting the needs of the Geneseo community. It is very seldom that I have an encounter, have, have an encounter with a person that says they are unhappy with the current situation or the board. However, I have taken notice of a couple of patterns that I think we need to keep in check. And through this election, we can, we can do that. Um, the only way to do it is through elections and voting. Checks and balances are necessary for a healthy democracy and fun to function, and I feel that we are risk at risk of seeing those checks and balances rapidly fading away in Livingston County. I'm worried about the decisions that will be made by certain members of the, of the, candidates, the people that are seeking candidacy tonight. Will they be able to make independent decisions from each other and other elected officials in the community? I question that significantly. For those reasons, this election is the most important election that Geneseo and the Livingston County 
and Livingston County community will see in many years to come. They have 10 year, the people to the, my left have 10 year uh, terms. That's extremely important to what we do as, as a community. Um, we want elected officials who are fair, balanced, independent, and serving the interests of the community as a whole, not just themselves and their friends. It's not about power grabbing or doing self-serving deals, which we are seeing on a too often Amber. basis. Amber, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Hello, my name's Matt Griffo. I'm going to wing this. Uh, it's not my favorite place to be here tonight. I'd rather be home watching the baseball game. I grew up here in Geneseo. My parents met here at Geneseo, Geneseo State. Uh, my wife graduated from Geneseo. This is my town. I care deeply about Geneseo. I pride myself of be being out in the community, listening to what people want, what they need, and trying to be understanding and not have an opinion or a preconceived notion of the way things should be done. I readily give my number out to people so that they can call me, they can talk to me, Sometimes it gets me in trouble. Sometimes I help people out. Um, one of my main concerns is spending your money. I pride myself in trying to be frugal. I grew up in a family. My dad was a county treasurer. I learned from an early age, this is not my money and it's your money. And I will do my best to spend it wisely. I work at the salt mine here in the purchasing department. We spend millions of dollars supporting the mine and supporting local uh, companies. Every day we try to save money for the company and I promise you every day I'll try to save money for the town of Geneseo. Thank you for your time. Good evening. First and foremost I would like to thank everybody who came as well. I would like to make a shout out to Nick in the back. Thank you very much. He is tirelessly um, the logistics of this, there were emails going back and forth as late as this afternoon. So I would like to thank you, Nick, very much. Um, my name is Andrea Bailey, and um, I am a lifelong resident of Livingston County, as well as many of the folks sitting up here. I've lived in Geneseo for the last 18 years with my husband, John, my son, Lyndon, and my stepchildren, Morgan and Ryan. I have 25 years of multi-level management background. And with that comes extensive um, human resource and customer service. I have brought that management, human resource, and customer service to the Geneseo Town Board. I ran two years ago and was at a forum two years ago talking to a group just like this. And at that forum, I stood up and I said, I am here to serve all the people of Geneseo. And that is what I have done for the last year and 10 months. In addition to making sure that we do that day-to-day -day business of what a of the town board does, ensuring that we bring our budget in under the 2% mandated tax cap that we have to, ensuring that we have safe roads, ensuring that the infrastructure is where we need it to be. Over that time, I personally have completed the required annual audit of the town justice courts and presented that to the board. That audit then gets turned over to the office of the court administration. During the first audit, I would like to just tell you, I had a very nice conversation because we have shared services with the village. In that conversation, it was with the mayor. And the mayor and I started a conversation about our shared services that we have with the court clerks. That then led to, uh, well, let's get Will involved and let's get the town clerk and the village clerk involved because they handle the payroll. So that then led to further conversation to where I, we sat down as a collective group and negotiated that shared service that we have with the town and the village to ensure that we were meeting the needs of both the village and the town at a ratio that met the work level that the clerks were doing both for the village court and the town court. I did that for all the people of the town of Geneseo. I've also worked closely with the supervisor um, 
and the folks that are involved in our union. And we just actively um, negotiated the next contract for our union workers. I'm currently on the committee to review the master plan, the, our comprehensive master plan. If any of you were here two years ago, you heard me talk about that comprehensive master plan. That is the makeup of what our body, our governing body uses to make decisions. So I felt it compelling that I understand that. And in there it indicated that within in 10 years you need to review it and update it. I've made sure that we're doing that. I run to serve all of the people in Geneseo. I will continue to run to serve all of the people in Geneseo. And I ask for your support on November 5th. Hello, I'm Will Wadsworth. Thank you all for, for this great forum. Thanks everyone for coming out. I see shirts of many colors and groups. <clears throat> um, politics in Geneseo is an interesting thing. It's a small town. Um, if you get involved, you, you quickly learn that it's, the, the colors drop off the day you get elected and it's time to start working together. I feel I have a very good relationship with Mayor Duff. We get along great. We meet every, week, every two weeks to just make sure there's not something brewing that's, that's a trouble thing. Um, I was born in, in Rochester, but I grew up in Geneseo. <clears throat> I was a farmer by trade. That's what I was until I was 25 when I was flooded out in Groveland and I lost all the money I had and had to start something new. So I went to retail business. Then we had two kids and then those kids grew up a little bit and we didn't have any money. So I went to work for a company named Jones Chemicals <clears throat> and did corporate environmental compliance, including DOT, OSHA, EPA, Federal Railroad uh, nationally for them, and that was a great education. Um, the son of the owner wanted my job in 2004, so he asked me to please leave, and I did. Um, <clears throat> I came back to Geneseo, where I uh, started a, a business at Sweetbriar, doing weddings and events. That was a surprise, and shortly, well, in 2007, was elected to this position as town supervisor. Um, I've served with um, with distinction. If you look at our at our audits, every audit that we've had of our financial practices has been excellent. Um, we have an excellent staff at the town. We've had turnover. Those people, the new people, are as good as the people that they replaced. That's taken a tremendous amount of effort. We have a great board. Um, I think the, the greatest thing about our board, and, and I think they know it, is that we sit down at a table with an agenda and with issues to deal with, and we start talking. Um, I don't push an agenda. I don't push them into certain ways. I don't back talk in the back rooms in the, in the building. I don't call people over the weekend and say, I really need your vote here. Um, I want this board to feel authentically involved in the process and to, for, for them to know that they're, they matter. It's five people with a vote. As supervisor, I don't have any more power or any more influence than anybody else on this board. So sometimes it goes a different way than I thought it would, but that's fine. I mean, we're here to, to do a job for the people of this town. So um, I really like the work. I've enjoyed doing it. Um, it happens at Wegmans. It happens at the coffee shop. It happens at the town office. It happens wherever you are because people say, oh, there you are. I have a question for you. And so it's a, it's a full-time job in that sense. Um, and it's, it's interesting because you hear things you never thought you'd hear. You know, people have a problem on that road over there. They didn't, you didn't know about that. So the town board gets together and, and works it out. Um, we do union negotiations. We do contracts. We do um, comprehensive plans, a farmland protection plan. We've, it's it's never-ending. On top of the town work, I'm also serving on the Board of Supervisors at the county level. Our job is to oversee all these incredible departments that you've heard something about tonight and make sure they have the resources and the staff and the tools they need to do the excellent work they do for us in Livingston County. I'd love to have your vote um, for town supervisor, and thank you so much again for being here. Thank you. Um, so uh, what I have done, I have um, you know, um, separated uh, the questions out. And so I'm going to start with a generic one for everybody. And um, that question would be, what does Livingston County, or for you all, the, the, the town of Geneseo, mean to you? And um, what kind of volunteer or community service have you done for the county or the town? And we can, you can just kind of, we'll allow you to bounce around and wants, wants to take it. Uh, Geneseo means the world to me. It's, uh, it's my home. Um, it's incredible. Uh, I love the fact that 
this community um, rotates out about half of its population every four years, and you know, every year five or several thousand new people come here. And in many cases, they stay. And it's very exciting to see who stays in this community um, after they've come here for college or for whatever reason. So we have a unique uh, town in the sense that we're constantly refreshing. We're constantly seeing new ideas come out. Um, we're not stuck in, in the past. We're not stuck in any time. And so from its inception in 1790, Geneseo has been a, a thriving, changing, growing place. And um, it, for me, it's an, it's an incredible place to be. I like being here. It's a, and I've been a, an EMT. I served on the, in the fire department for years. Um, I was an ambulance driver for years, then became an EMT. And then uh, work caused me to stop doing that. So now I serve on the town board. Well, having grown up here in the county, um, I, I think that um, I share values um, and experiences with the folks here in the community. Um, I've been involved in our community my entire um, life, I, having lived first and, and grown up and graduated from Mount Morris Central, uh, and then residing in my adult life here in the Geneseo community, which I echo uh, Will's sentiments in terms of what a vibrant community it is. Um, I love our county. Uh, it's been really um, beautiful uh, this fall in particular um, as we've gone door to door throughout the entire 17 towns here in the county, uh, just reinforcing what I've already known, but how beautiful our county is. Um, I've been involved greatly with my church and um, I'm a member and an elder at the um, First Presbyterian Church in Tuscarora. Uh, we do a lot of um, outreach and community dinners and fundraising for community uh, events. And um, I'm on the session there. And then my husband and I have been greatly involved in youth sports with our sons, um, coaching Little League, um, with hockey, timekeeping, scorekeeping, um, and being involved in those types of activities in our community. Thank you. Um, you know, I did a little video, actually, about what home means and that home is defined as, as a person's residence. But Livingston County is much more than that to me. It's, it's, I chose Livingston County to raise my family here. It's a beautiful place to raise a family. Uh, I've built my business here. Besides being a lawyer, I have a business. I have a law firm. Um, and I've chose to plant roots here. And to, and to grow my children here and to grow my family here because it is a wonderful place to live and to work. It's a safe community. And it's that word community which um, always hits home with me uh, when it comes to Livingston County. I've seen firsthand how we take care of our neighbors. When people are in need, people circle the wagons. And I've been a part of that um, through some charitable events, uh, formed a not-for-profit corporation that helps our friends and neighbors that are in need. I also volunteer my time at school as a second step teacher, which is a, a second step is a program. I think it's in all the schools. It certainly is in Avon um, that's about anti-bullying. Uh, I also uh, provide pro bono services uh, regularly to our community members. That's free legal services. Um, Livingston County is a, a great, safe, happy place to be, and I love it. Thank you. What does Geneseo mean to me? Um, Geneseo is my home. It's been my home for the last 18 years, um, moving down the road from Avon. That's where I was born and raised. Um, this is where my family is. If anyone knows where I live, I live out on Elm Road, and many people call it Bally Road. Um, we are all out there, and it's our family. Um, my father-in-law farms about 500 acres. That's his pastime. Um, and that is what Geneseo is. It's open air. It's, um, country. The Geneseo, the Genesee Valley hunt rides on our property. There's many Monday mornings where you open your window and you can hear the hounds coming through the backyard, but it's also more than that. It's, it's the community that you have with the friends. So, Raising my son and helping raise my two stepchildren, it's the network of friends and family that are here and the bonds that we've created. Some of the um, sports boosters, I'm currently the treasurer. I've been active in that for seven years. Many um, school events with my son I have volunteered with. 
I was a youth soccer coach. I was a former Girl Scout leader. And there are a few um, community organizations that I am also involved in. Thank you. Um, although I didn't really grow up in Geneseo, Geneseo has always held a special place in my heart. I grew up in Mount Morris, but Geneseo was the first place that I got my first job at Ponderosa, if anybody remembers Ponderosa. It's the old 24-7. Um, so I worked there for the first year of my um, you know, career, I guess. Um, when I was 17 years old, I'd wash dishes over there, and then I moved up to waitress. Um, and then after that, I uh, started working at Walmart, and I worked at Walmart for five years. So I spent a lot of time in my early years at, at, in Geneseo and commuting back and forth to Geneseo. Um, I especially, uh, in 2007, I actually moved to Geneseo and spent um, about a year down on the lake. And the lake is one of my favorite places to be and spend. I enjoy it immensely. So um, that's one of my favorite things to do around here is to go down to the lake. Um, I have been involved, a couple years ago I got involved with a, a group called Glow Progressives um, and was a, a co-leader in some organization um, in, for lack of a better term, resistance to Trump. So um, I've been actively involved with that and uh, that's been one of my one of my achievements, I believe, so thank you. Uh, Livingston County means everything to me. Uh, I was not born here, but I chose here. Uh, when my wife, uh, we were deciding we were raising our family and starting our family, we wanted to raise a family uh, in a small community where we knew our neighbors and we felt comfortable and we felt safe. Uh, and we've been so blessed to be, to be in Avon and we have, we've met so many friends there and, and really been blessed to be a part of that community. Ever since I've been here, I've been actively involved in the community. Uh, I've been a member of Second Step, like Kevin was describing. Uh, that's a, you know, with the Avon Primary School, you go in and you teach a 30-minute lesson every week, you know, usually teaching the kids a character trait. Um, and, and actually, they teach us probably more than, than we teach them when, when we can control them. But I've also been very active. Uh, I'm, I have a great love of sports. Uh, I'm on the Avon Little League board, uh, and I also coach there. Uh, and we work with the community, you know, step by step, you know, working with the community and bringing that to the kids, and we're very proud of that program. I'm also a, a big member of the Avon Soccer Club, even though I really don't know much about soccer. And like I, as I mentioned in my opening, I also started a, a basketball program for the girls in Avon. Uh, a couple years ago, I was watching TV with my, with my daughter, and we were watching a game, and it occurred to me she knew nothing about it. Uh, so I went to the town, and I said, why can't we you know, get a program? They said, there's no interest. I sent home a flyer, and the very first night, we had 50 girls in the gym. Uh, so I'm very proud of that program. I think now we have 60 girls in the program from third grade to sixth grade. So thank you very much. Thank you. So Livingston County means everything to me. Um, I have to admit, I'm 57 years old, um, and my whole, almost my whole entire life, I've lived in Livingston County, except for when I went to college. My, my dad, grandfather, great-grandfather had a meat market in Livonia. Um, I remember that as a kid, uh, Graff's Red and White Meat Market. My husband, Sam, he's from Geneseo, and his, his family ran a farm, the Lindsner Farm. So I, I, after graduating from law school, came back here in 1991 and then got admitted in 92 and has since, during that, like I said, t almost 28 years of practicing, has been right here in Livingston County because this is my home. This is where, where I love to live, and I chose to live here too, understanding what it was like to grow up here. I was a four-sport athlete in school. Uh, when I was in high school, I went to college for basketball, and so I took that after coming back here and we raised a, our family here. My volunteerism, I don't probably have enough to time to tell you, so you can look at my website. But I've been on the 4-H advisory board. 4-H is important to me. I've gone into the classroom teaching agriculture in the classroom. 4-H uh, leader for 13 years, a travel soccer coach for 11 years, a travel basketball coach for 10 years, indoor soccer coach, summer soccer coach, Cub Scout leader for both of my boys. Um, I volunteered on, for the public library. Um, at my church, I was lay trustee of my church, and I volunteered for my church for numerous things, as well as being three-time chairperson for Livonia Senior Fun Night. So I've really dedicated myself to this community, and I want to be able to continue to do that by being county court judge. Thanks. My turn. <laughs> I, 
I was born and raised here in Geneseo, as I said earlier. I've worked my entire career, adult life here in Geneseo. Uh, my dad worked for the county, so at an early age, I got to learn about how the county government worked. Uh, Livingston County should be proud of itself that we're on the cutting edge when it comes to a lot of programs, a lot of services that are given to the people in Livingston County. It's a great place to live. Uh, I'm a former member of the fire department. I drove the ambulance. One of my proudest uh, moments was being a past president of the Kiwanis Club that interacts with all the major uh, nonprofits in our community. It was a very rewarding year. I coached baseball when I was younger, and Geneseo is just one of the great communities in our state. We were the first to, one of the first to uh, welcome the homes for people that moved out of Sanye. I had a brother who was a person of special needs. Our community embraced him and made him part of this community where he didn't have to be in one of these structured programs. His structured program was Geneseo, and I'm just so proud to be part of this community. I have to say um, that Geneseo as a community is a great volunteer community. It really serves each other and really rises in a crisis. I've seen several crises occur here, and I'm very proud uh, to be part of a community that reacted in the loving and caring way um, that it did and has on many occasions. Um, I'm, from a volunteer standpoint, I was part of the founding group that formed the current uh, Geneseo Central PTSA, also worked on the science fair, I got that going, uh, mostly with Anna Kowalczyk. And I serve on several migrant service agencies and have interaction with them, uh, serving the migrants directly and indirectly, uh, the farmers for which they work. Um, I love the landscape in Geneseo. It's a great place to ride my bike. I ride my bike all around looking at all these signs. Uh, they'll be down soon, but it's a lovely place to be. And if you love nature, this is the place to live. Thank you. Um, the next question will be for the judicial candidates. And it will be, if you are elected as county court judge, what steps might you take to improve the court system? I can answer that, or I will answer that. We have a big drug and opioid problem in this county. And there is drug court that does help um, a lot of people. It's a wonderful thing for those that are willing to help themselves. What I would like to see is an improvement in the opioid um, crisis that's here in Livingston County. And so one thing I would like to do is to incorporate more education and help for those that are, um, have opioid problems. I see it all the time in my court. Um, in town court, we see a lot of drugs and a lot of it is, is heroin, cocaine. And um, I think as a community, we need to do something about that more. Secondly, in family court, I have seen lots of situations where there is a necessity for supervised visitation because of a problem with op opioids or alcoholism or some other type of abuse where there needs to be contact and it's in the best interest of the child to have contact, but it needs to be supervised. And oftentimes in our county, we cannot find a supervisor unless that person can find an acceptable family member to be that supervisor. So I would like to find a way for our county, like other counties have, to have some type of organization to help so that fathers and mothers that need that supervised visitation can have that contact with the, with the child or children because it really is in the best interest of the children to do that if it's appropriate. That's what I'd like to do. You know, one of the things that I have noticed um, being back here and practicing in family court extensively now um, is that uh, I think there are ways to make improvements um, with the scheduling uh, of our matters there. Um, any given family court day, you can walk in there and there are folks that are there that are for their scheduled appearance and they may be missing an entire day of work, um, an entire half day of work, and then they are coming back again and again. Um, also, the scheduling of our hearings in family court. Um, I had a situation where we had a severe um, physical abuse case and um, 
it, it took from December through August um, for us to get enough cobbled together half days and, and whole days to get that, um, that just the hearing done. And so I think that that's a disservice. And so I think that there are certainly room for improvement in that. And also the way our, our, our courts are conducted sometimes. Um, I think that sometimes, and I've, I've, I've seen it, and I've talked to people in the community, and um, they don't always feel heard in court, and they don't always feel that um, the, the courtroom is being conducted in a, in a way that a family court should be. So those are some things I would look forward to working on if I were elected. Thank you. Um, although my office is here in Geneseo, I have the benefit of, of traveling around courts and representing people uh, throughout Western New York. And I've seen how uh, some courts do things really well. Um, one of the things that I think that we're totally lacking in Livingston County is, is a mental health court. Uh, Ms. Linsner talked about treatment court for drug treatment court. We have a treatment court that is here. But there is a huge gap of treating people with mental health. And the, the, the number of people that we are seeing with mental health and the severity of the mental health is on the increase. And there simply isn't a good option a lot of times. It's either let them go out to the community again or lock them up and warehouse them for a while without really addressing some of the mental health concerns. That dovetails with with um, substance abuse and treatment court for drug treatment court as well. Um, and, and in terms of how we schedule our county court matters, every single case that, that goes in county court gets conferenced in the morning. So everybody shows up, whether there's 10 cases or 25 cases, everybody shows up at nine o'clock in the morning, we all go in, we conference the case, then we all go out on the record. We don't need to do that. Uh, first of all, it wastes, it wastes time and it lacks transparency. Clients hate it when the lawyers and the judge go in a back room and talk and then come out and tell them what's gonna happen. Everything should be done on the record. Those are some changes I'd like to make. In my opinion, the two biggest problems we have in Livingston County are the number of sex abuse cases and also the drug problem. Uh, what, one change that I wanna do is I wanna try to revamp the drug court. Uh, my uncle, uh, Judge Schwartz in Rochester City Court, uh, he was a judge there 30 years, and he was actually the pioneer in, in drug court treatment. He actually brought that to New York State. One thing I notice uh, about our drug court is we don't get a lot of people in it. And the reason we don't get a lot of people in it is because typically the offer to defendants is the same whether they complete the drug court or they don't. So there's not a lot of incentive for defendants to go to get into the program and get, get the treatment they need so that they can turn their life around. And also for defense attorneys, they don't want to tell their clients, well, hey, go ahead and you know, complete this, add another thing on, when they're still going to get the same sentence, whether they complete drug court or not. So one thing I want to do is give people more of an incentive to get into the program, maybe offer them something at the end so that they can go in and complete the treatment. Because I'm an on-call ADA, and we keep getting these calls. Every week we're seeing these kids, 18, 19, 20-year-old kids, they're overdosing on drugs. And if they're not overdosing on drugs, they're just in county court every couple months committing new crimes. So to help these kids, it'll help the, these 18, 19, 20-year-old kids turn their life around, and it also will keep crime down for our county. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question will be for the town council candidates. As the town of Geneseo continues to grow commercially and residentially, what is your vision about the types of industry or businesses and the extent of development that should occur? Um, ultimately, what is the role of the town council in determining appropriate development? When we started uh, in 2008, um, we had a, a, a code that was from 1972 so over the last four years, um, leading up to 2018, we rewrote the, the town code of the, village, the town of Geneseo. Um, the village had done that about six years before. So we worked very hard with, um, with the village, um, with the, a member of the village planning board, David Woods, who's on both planning boards, to redo the zoning of the town so that it, it dovetailed with the village. So um, the idea is that we'll start with more dense 
growth closer to the village line so that the, there's not a distinct line between the two where it's dense on one side and, and very thin on the other. Um, we have the gateway, which is out where Walmart and Coast Professional are. That's where we target um, any kind of light industrial, not too much noise. Um, uh, uh, residential, like the hammocks, is supposed to be a mixed use, so there's um, right now an application in the uh, in the town at the planning board for a multi-use development across from, from Wegmans. There's going to be small, uh, smaller individual businesses that will end up owning their own lots. Um, our feeling is that residential should stay closer to the village. Uh, we're not, we don't like the idea of big uh, development out in the middle of the open spaces in the town. I'm running out of time. Um, but we have a very comprehensive uh, design standard so that people who come to town have a very clear picture of what we're looking for before they start applying for. An a, a, a permit. So there's a few things that I actually think of, and we um, just encountered this in the last year um, when we were approached as a board. And at the end of the day, the board, if, if someone wants to come in and um, look to develop, if it falls within code, then the town board does not have um, a say in it, it goes to the planning board and then it goes through that process. But if an organization or a group comes to the town board to look for a letter of support as they're pursuing something and we have residents who approach us with their concern on said development, then we can voice that and we don't have to necessarily support that letter of, we don't have to um, write that letter of support. Um, I think that we also have to pay attention to when a survey was done, when the last master plan was put together, 1,500 voters were surveyed. And when you look at the favorable pieces of Geneseo, why individuals liked Geneseo, it was the rural, small town character, the community businesses, the historic community, the schools, the open space, so I think as town board members, we need to keep that in mind and we need to have an open ear and listen to what our community is telling us when we are approached. Thank you. I echo Andrea's concerns. Uh, we were approached about a development in the town that was going to serve a certain group of people and it was going to be subsidized. I did my own survey and drove around town, and presently we have nine complexes that are subsidized apartment buildings. We serve over eight, or excuse me, we serve over a thousand people in our community in those particular complexes. It puts a major strain on, which I should say, which is 10% of our population. So I think we've done our due diligence when it comes to serving folks that need help. We have plenty of apartments and, and there's open spaces in those apartment complexes that are there now. We have to be concerned about our fire department, our ambulance, our police force, and right now we're at the breaking point. I think our fire department chief, he could be a full-time person. You know, it's, it's something that we really need to be concerned about. We have plazas that have empty spaces in them, so I'm a little concerned about new development when it comes to retail. Uh, there's an interesting project now at the corner across from Walmart that is a medical facility possibly and that I think could be some proper growth for our community. It'll bring good paying jobs and it's a it's a area that's is okay to develop in my mind but I think we need to be concerned about sprawl up 20A and traffic. Um, I, I guess this is the the difficulty of running local government and town village government is make, uh, having a balance of commercial and residential. Um, I think a big thing too is making sure your infrastructure is okay too and focusing on that. I think that, that um, you know, expanding the water district a bit, uh, making sure the roads, and Matt brought up one of the, the apartment complexes I, I have to go to on a regular basis in the village. Um, the, the parking lot's atrocious, and you know may, that may be a code enforcement officer situation or planning board situation and dealing with the management company, but 
you know, making sure the the areas are safe for the residents is a is is definitely one thing where you have to focus on um, what what that's going to be and balancing the charm of Geneseo with wanting to have businesses attracted to Geneseo too. So. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up was there's an interesting, um, I don't know if people frequent the Genesee River, and there's an area, I think, in the town, and I need a little bit more information on this. It is in the village. It would be nice to have an access point to get down and maybe do some kayaking down there, and Mount Morris actually did a whole thing there. So I kind on a, on a little level, that might be something maybe where we could work with the village on doing something along those lines. And maybe it's been already explored, but <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that uh, any development should be part of a master plan uh, that should be regularly updated. Uh, you need to get community input and couple that with professional advice. I think commercial development should, develop a lar should benefit a large portion of the community, as Matt said, like vis-a-vis -vis employment, uh, and not just cater to individuals' interests, and we have to consider the environment and the aesthetic. Thank you. The next uh, question will be for the judge candidates. In the campaign literature, we read a lot about protecting children and families. Please describe your experience in family court and what you have done in your career that demonstrates your willingness and ability to protect our families and children. So as I indicated earlier, um, I started out down here in Livingston County as um, an assistant district attorney. I was a special victims prosecutor, and as part of that, I was on the child abuse task force. Um, I also handled the prosecution of sexual abuse cases um, against children in addition to sexual assault cases for adults. And as you might imagine, those are some of the most difficult cases to prosecute. Um, I recall one trial that we had, and this man had been having these three children um, perform sexual acts with each other and was videoing them. And they had to testify in court about that. And so I have spent my career um, in positions where I can help our children. I'm currently your social services attorney, and uh, as I indicated before, I spend a large chunk of my time prosecuting child abuse and neglect cases in family court. And they range the gambit. Uh, we're here to help families. Um, there are a lot of drug abuse um, and drug use that we see. Um, I echo what some of the other candidates were talking about with their concern with that. Um, but there is also, unfortunately, a large amount of um, abuse of children. And um, the types of cases that I'm involved in prosecuting uh, in family court for the social services department are some of the most difficult and complex cases that are family courts here. Thank you. I've um, I've been practicing in, in family court uh, since I've been a, uh, since I've been an attorney. So for nearly 13 years, I've I've been in family court, uh, representing parents, um, whether it's uh, child custody matters, um, where we have to file orders to show cause sometimes to get custody uh, of a child if there's a dangerous situation. I've spent some time on the law guardian or the attorney for the child panel, uh, representing children in family court. When when a family comes to family court, there's a crisis of some variety. There's feuding parents, uh, divorcing parents, there's issues of abuse or neglect. And, uh, you know, immediate action has to be taken a lot of times. And, and again, my entire career I've spent uh, representing parents in those instances. Um, so again, uh, 13 years of experience in family court, uh, representing children, fathers, mothers, uh, and all types of disputes and matters uh, in family court. So what I do in my role in the district attorney's office is I'm the chief sex crimes prosecutor. Sex crimes prosecutor. So what I do is I prosecute people uh, who, who have committed sexual crimes against children. Um, and and it, it's a great passion of mine to prosecute these cases. There's nothing like going in into a courtroom and in front of a packed courtroom with a, with a jury of 12 people and your star witness is a seven or eight year old child uh, and their fate is in your hands and, and you're working with them. Sometimes you spend up to two years preparing them as they go through the court process. In fact, the last trial that I just had, uh, the young man had been sexually abused for seven years by his stepfather. 
Uh, and throughout the course of the, the case, he could never be touched. He didn't want anybody to shake his hand. You couldn't give him a hug. As he would go through his high school halls, nobody could touch him. Everyone had to stay away from him. And after we were able to get a guilty verdict and, and he was vindicated, I'll never forget he was able to come up to me with a big smile on his face and, and give me a huge hug. It was, it was probably the highlight of, of my professional career. So every day I'm working with children. I'm working with families that have been broken apart by sexual abuse. Uh, working with these kids, preparing them for grand jury, getting them, taking them through the case, preparing them for trial um, as they have to testify and face these people that have sexually abused them. Um, and it's, it's been a really rewarding and, and the highlight of my career. Thanks. Thank you. So um, for almost 28 years, I've had a true general practice. And in doing that, protecting families means a lot. It means helping with estate planning. It means helping with, with business law, all of which I've done. It means providing legal advice to families in need, uh, families for emergency purposes. Um, as a judge, I have sentenced and been compassionate about what the needs of protecting that individual or family might be, whether it's issuing orders of protection in domestic violence situations, whether it's ordering treatment for alcoholism or for drug abuse. Um, so on the judge end of it, I've been able to do that. In family court, I've represented all different parties in family court for almost 28 years, helping families understand and navigate all parts of family court. But what I've been most passionate about is my work as an attorney for the child for tw over 27 years. As in, and in doing that, I'm advocating for the child. I'm able to give that child advice about how they're feeling. I'm able to answer questions to that child about what to expect. Um, oftentimes I follow through with representing these children or helping these children for years. I recently had three of my attorney for the child children are now adults, have kids of their own, telling me how important the role was that, that, of what I did to be able to provide advice and protect them. So um, I've done that for a long time and would continue to do it as county judge if, you, if I was given the chance. Thanks. So I'm in a difficult position because I have about 10 more questions and minus three minutes. <laughs> Um, so what I, I think I would like to do um, is to give the council candidates a chance to respond to one more question. Maybe ask during the final closing statement if you could try to shorten your statements by about a minute, and then we won't run over too far. No problem. Okay, and so thank you for hanging out for a little extra time. Um, so I wanted to, to include a question that uh, uh, I'm assuming came from a student. Um, how will you encourage student civic engagement beyond uh, simply um, asking them to vote? And how will your legislation process take student voices into account? Um, I, obviously the, the college and the students here are extremely important. They're the next generation of voters and people getting involved in government or levels other other parts of their other parts of uh, just living in a community so it's really important to drive home the importance of voting first of all showing up to vote um, and um, what was the other part of the question I apologize um, how will your legislation process oh, take student voices? The, um, what I'd like to do um, is start streaming the town board um, meetings. Um, person, on a personal level, I have not been able to make a town board meeting because it's um, been interfering with my uh, school schedule. So, um, but I really, I really would like to get to a meeting, but it's been very difficult. Um, so I think to in, try to get civic engagement and the college students involved and just the community in general is to live stream, um, have some uh, upgrades of uh, equipment and technology in order to access that information um, when you're when you're sitting home or or you're able or you're sitting at school waiting for your class to start. Thanks. 
Um, I, I think like voting is the far most important thing you can do. Um, and I'll say more about that in my closing statement. But to get people civically involved in a community, you gotta first get them involved in the community. So like the fire department, a lot of students volunteer there, and we have a lot of other volunteer aspects. So I think the first thing to do is actually get them embedded in the community activities and then move to more of a involvement in government directly. But getting them to vote is not a small matter. You know, we have public meetings, <clears throat> and the uh, meetings are, our schedules are published. Uh, we, we're very open to having people come to our meetings. We sometimes have a lot of people if we have a public hearing. Um, it's great when people come to our meetings. Um, if a new face is in the room, I always stop at some point in the meeting and ask if the person's come with a concern or if they have anything they'd like to ask us. Because sometimes it's kind of complicated. We're sitting around a table. Uh, talking and making decisions, and sometimes it's not clear how the process works. So um, at the county level, the same thing happens at, at, our, at our regular meetings. Um, engagement's interesting. We have, uh, we have meetings, we have agendas, we have minutes that we publish. Um, those are all public. Those are all available. Um, and as a town, um, we're, not, we're not interfacing with students as often <clears throat> as the village would be doing, for example, with housing and, and issues around um, like social host laws and things like that. Um, we're not really participating in that. Um, but again, anytime we have more people, we learn more about the, about the community around us. Um, I like the idea of live streaming. Um, that's an interesting thought. And uh, if we do that, I hope people will watch. And I would like to add to that some sort of a, a question and answer component so people don't have to come to the town to ask a question. Um, we'd love to know more. We'd really love to hear from people. Thank you. One of my favorite sayings is, if you think you're the smartest person in the room, you're not. So with the students on campus here and the young people in our community, I encourage them to get involved locally. Uh, we've had many problems here in the village, and one of them being the intersection of Main Street and Court Street. We spent tens of thousands of dollars on studies of what to do there. One bright young student wrote, and he goes, why don't you put some stop signs there? Perfect. I mean, there, there was opposition to when it first went up, but if you talk to the Department of Transportation, you talk to the Sheriff's Office, they all think it's a great idea. And when I pull up to that intersection now, I kick myself, like, why didn't you think of this 20 years ago? <laughs> so community involvement is important for the young people in our community, not just the college students, but high school students and anyone I encourage them to come to our meetings, bring fresh ideas, and we look forward to seeing you at our meeting. I would agree um, with Matt. I think asking the questions, and I think that, um, I mean, we have a population of 5,000 sitting here um, on campus, and that's a lot of ideas. So I think we just have to be open, we have to listen, and a lot of we sit and try to figure things out, but there's a lot of answers already out there if we are just open to ask the questions and then we have to sit back and listen when they give us the, when we get the answers. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is I would love to look at some type of internship piece, whether that be students coming up to the town to work in the various departments, whether that be alongside the assessor when they're there, whether that be alongside the code officer when they're there, whether that be alongside the supervisor when they're there, um, in addition to coming to our meetings, whether that be working with the town clerk to understand what the local level government does. Because today when I was sitting out at the table for a few hours out here, you know, there still is confusion on what the village does and what the town does. So I think that anything that we could do to help bridge that gap of understanding, I would be open for it. And I think that I could speak for, I don't want to speak for them, but I could speak for the members in the town and I think we all would be open for that. Thank you. So, um, 
Uh, we'll take this time now to allow you all to give a, a final um, two-minute closing statement. And um, maybe we can just start again over here and um, go across the, the table. Sure, thank you. You know, the people of Livingston County deserve a judge um, who's going to be fair and impartial and above all, always act in the interest of justice. My passion for justice has ensured that each day um, throughout my career that I've gone to work, I can go to work and do the right thing for the right reason. That passion combined with my work ethic, my excellent research and writing skills, my extensive experience in the criminal law as both a federal and a local prosecutor, my in-depth knowledge of the family court as your social services attorney, my work at the Supreme Court Appellate Division on complex civil appeals, my knowledge of matters in surrogate's court, combined with my dedication to serving this community throughout my career, you make me uniquely qualified to be one of your next two county court judges. Along the campaign trail, folks have asked me why. Why do you want to be our next county court judge? And for me, really, it's about how next best to serve my community. I have served this community, again, at a local level as an assistant district attorney, as your senior social services attorney, and at a regional level as an assistant United States attorney prosecuting some of the largest violent narcotics trafficking cases in organizations there are in this region. And I want to continue to do that. And in the course of my career, and I have seen the way in which our Livingston County judges and the decisions that they make profoundly impact on the folks that live here in this county. I've seen and understand how crucial it is that our next county court judges have the right skills and the right experience for the complexities of that office. And serving as one of your next two county court judges is going to allow me to continue to serve this community, to use my skills and my experience to help ensure that all the folks that come before the Livingston County Court are going to be treated on justly impartially and fairly. And I would be deeply honored to have one of your two votes on election day. Thank you. Again, thank you all for, uh, for attending and, and listening. And, and first I'd like to say that as to all the candidates here, you, you have a lot of good choices. Um, these are my colleagues, these are my friends. Um, so you have some tough decisions to make. Uh, on January 1st, whoever takes office is going to be vested with the authority uh, to do lots of things. They're going to be able to, with a swipe of a pen, take children away in family court, remove them from homes. They're going to, with a swipe of a pen, be able to incarcerate someone in county court. They're going to be able to award judgments in Supreme Court. They're going to determine whether or not a will gets admitted to probate in surrogate court. Uh, just to share briefly a little numbers with you, uh, in 2018, the number of new court filings in surrogate's court was 589, 851 in Supreme Court, 252 in county court, 1,505 in family court. Those were all new filings in 2018. And on January 1st, the judge that you elect is going to have to be able to be competent in all of those courts. And I can tell you having experience in all four of those courts, not just a little bit here and there or at times, walk into my office now, you will find files in all four courts. That's the way it's been my entire career. So I submit to you that I am uniquely qualified to be ready to serve on January 1st. Um, there are two openings. You do get to vote for two candidates. I would be honored to have your support. Please, uh, my cell phone number, 585-305-4325, it's out on the internet. It's basically a matter of public record now. If there's any questions that I can answer for you at any time between now and, and uh, election day or thereafter, please feel free to reach out. I wanna make myself available to all of you. Again, thank you all and congratulations to uh, all the candidates that are here, thank you. From the moment I got into this election eight months ago, all I've heard about is politics what political party you're in, what political connections you have, what each party can do for you. I don't like politics. All right? Quite frankly, I'm sick of them. This is not a, uh, an election about if you're a lifelong Republican or you're a lifelong Democrat. All right? What this election is about is about who you are. And what I've been is in that court every day for 15 years. I've been an advocate, a prosecutor, a litigator, 
and a public servant. I don't have political connections. I don't want political connections. A judge should not be politically connected. If you're looking for a judge who's beholden to certain groups and individuals, I'm not your candidate. But if you're looking for someone who's been in that court every day, fighting the battles, keeping the community safe, fighting for children, fighting for you, fighting for your children, fighting for your parents, then I'm the candidate you're looking for. My whole career has been as a public servant, serving this community, putting the community needs first, and that's what a great judge does. From the moment I got into this campaign, from day one, my motto has been protecting our families. And that's just not some campaign motto or slogan that you can just throw up on a billboard. That's a way of life. That's the way I live my life, both personally and professionally. That's what I stand for. And if that's what you're looking for in a judge, and that's what you want, then I am your candidate. And I'd ask for your vote on November 5th. Thank you. Thank you very much. This has been great, and I'm so glad that, again, that people care about this election. I think sometimes when it's a judge uh, election, people kind of sit in the back seat and think, oh, well, this judge election is important. Both of our current judges are retiring. There's no incumbent judge. The four of us are running for two positions, and as Kevin said, there are two votes that you have on November 5th. And I really think it's important to, to vote for and, and have us elect someone with experience. So everyone has different types of experience. Judicial experience is irreplaceable. You know what you're getting if you're voting for me because I've been a judge since 2016 in the town handling misdemeanor matters and a number of other different matters. And it doesn't matter who comes before me, what you're gonna get from me is fair, respectful, impartial. I, I am tough on crime. I think people need to be held accountable but I think it's important to be fair and respectful and impartial as a judge. I've got to agree with Justin. A judge should be independent. It shouldn't be about party politics. It shouldn't be about that at all. And I have been independent my entire life. I really haven't been involved too much with, with any type of party politics. I haven't been on a political committee or anything like that. And I think that's important to have a judge who's independent, um, that's willing to do the best for the community by staying independent. And that's what you're gonna get from me because that's what I do right now as a judge. Um, I, I thank you for your time. Um, if anyone wants to talk to me afterwards, I would love to have a conversation with you if I didn't answer anything uh, tonight. One more thing, you mentioned about improvements and we all answered that question. I think it's important for the next two judges to work collaboratively and help to make the county court courthouse work together and I'm willing to do that with anyone that is up here and I think that's important and I promise you to that that I will do the best to work together with whoever else is here if I'm elected and I would really appreciate your support. Thanks very much. Uh, first I, I want to say thank you to the existing town board members. Uh, they're essentially serving in volunteer positions and I didn't have the opportunity to say that because I used all my whole four minutes in the opening. Um, and I also like to say thank you to the people who are here uh, to listen. But I mostly want to speak to the students uh, right now in my closing statement. Um, and I agree with what, what Judge Lisner said about fairness. I think it's quite important, probably the most important aspect in a judge. If you have a problem with the governmental board, you go to Livingston County Court. If you get a freedom of information request denied, you ultimately go to Livingston County Court. And if you're a victim of a crime or you're arrested, you ultimately go to Livingston County Court. It's a very important election. So I want you to consider that. And I also want you to consider that there are 1,000 students here on campus who are registered to vote. 50% of you vote. That's 1,000 votes. In our local election here, 4,000 votes total last time. In the last judge election, the last big judge election, is 18,000 votes. 1,000 votes is 6%. That's a big deal. For us, it's like 30%, even bigger deal. So you have influence, and if you're, in, if you're interested and you are engaged, then you should exercise it. If we don't vote, we don't have a democracy. I'm gonna try to vindicate myself a little bit for my opening statement, so. Um, but I reiterate uh, what Tony just said. Um, 
to have a voice in this election, which again, I'm gonna reiterate that, it is the most important election that Livingston County will see till the next really important election. This is it. Um, and voting is one of the most important things you will do as, as an American citizen. Cont contested elections are necessary for a healthy democracy. We have to send, we can't let people just sit in public office forever. They have to know that they will be, there will be demand for either change or making sure they're doing their jobs. Um, I do wanna leave you with this quote. Every election is determined by the people who show up. It is so important that you show up to vote and send a message to the people who are sitting here, including me, of what type of government you want. Um, you know, in 2016, people didn't show up. And I, I don't know that we ended up with the government that we want. So make sure on a local, a local level, you are showing up to send a message to these people sitting here that checks and balances matter, the Constitution matters, and as far as the judges race, race goes, impartiality, um, independence matters to you, making good decisions for our community. Um, again, I appreciate the opportunity. I'm so humbled and honored to be a part of this, um, to be sitting next to all these people is, I never thought I'd be here. So it's really an honor, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I have to be honest with you, I feel a little overwhelmed with our candidates here for justice. Uh, it's a very important position that they're going to represent and I don't think there's any bad choices up here. There's just good choices. So please get out and vote, it's very important. I would like to say that I feel qualified for the position that I'm in. I've served on the village planning board for 12 years. I was chair for five years of that. I've just spent four years on the town board and as they've said earlier, it's not about politics. It's about taking care of the people of Geneseo. And I guarantee you, or I'll, I'll, I'll promise you now, that I'll do my best to do my duty. And I would appreciate your vote on November 5th. Thank you. Again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming tonight. Thank you to Tony and Amber and Matt and Will. And of course, our judge candidates over there. Um, Again, I can't encourage all of you enough, and as you've heard it from everyone else, you know, make sure you get out and vote November 5th. I've served on the town board for the last year and 10 months, as I indicated. Um, I think I definitely, my 25 years of management experience with the extensive human resource and customer service background that I have has brought a great element to the board. Um, my dedication to the community, my openness to listen, without a preconceived opinion, my attention to detail, and my continued commitment to a transparent government, I believe are some reasons why you should vote for me, why I ask for your vote. And those of you that know me know I can't leave without a quote. And of course, it comes from my trusty master plan because it is who we are as the Geneseo um, board. And part of that, our vision statement from our master plan states, there has never been a greater need to be proactive in planning for a balance between development, open space, history, character, and economic viability. It goes on to state, the town strives to promote economic development that includes cooperation with the village, county, state, and involved property owners. In all of our efforts, Geneseo will emphasize support for community organizations, fiscal responsibility, and the highest standards of professionalism. And that is my commitment to you, that I will bring all of that to you on the town board. Thank you. Just some uh, 
slightly random thoughts. I certainly hope I'm not remembered as a politician when I'm done with this job. Um, I'd rather be remembered as a community servant. Um, it's a public servant job. It's not a. It's not a. It's not anything but, but that, as far as I'm concerned. Um, ego has no place in the town board. <clears throat> it's a place to get work done. It's a place to listen and hear the community and, and then do that work. Um, sometimes you find out that, that people don't like what you did, but you do the best you can. Um, I want to thank the, all the people here as candidates. Um, for the, those of you that are new at this, you've now entered a new club of people who know what it means to run for an office, and it's hard to do. It's, it's a grueling job, and I really appreciate everybody up here for their efforts there. Um, I have a passion about honest, open, and accountable government. Um, I'm always willing to hear a point of view that's different than mine. I'm always willing to, to, to try another idea, because alluding to what Matt said earlier, you, don't, you never know where the next great idea is going to come from. So you've got to have your ears open, two ears, one mouth, use it in proportion. Um, I'm also glad that I'm not running for judge. You guys are running for a very hard job, and I, I honor you for your commitment to it. You all sound wonderful. Um, thank you for coming out tonight. Thanks for having this tonight. I think you've done a great job moderating, um, and uh, I'll be here afterward if anybody has any questions. Thank you all, and vote, definitely vote. So I, too, want to echo that thank you um, for coming out. I, I do apologize for those of you who um, took the time to write a question, and I wasn't able to um, post that question to the candidates. Um, but I also want to reiterate that, um, that they will be in the back. And so if your question didn't uh, get asked, then please approach them and, and ask them um, that question uh, face to face. Thank you again to the Livingston County News um, for supporting this as well. And uh, check out their Facebook if you want to see this again. And again, thank you to all of you for coming out and supporting the process. Uh, we do appreciate it. Have a good night.